Perhaps the first, but certainly not the last time, a Queen song was about the family cat. All dead, all dead. Next on Crown Jewels. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to PLD Projects Crown Jewels. I'm your host, PLD, and this is the podcast where I take you on a journey through the entirety of the Queen catalog, including solo efforts. And we go through every track one by one, listening to all the different versions, released, unreleased, as whatever we can get our hands on, try to determine which version is the best version, Crown Jewel version of said track, so we can slide it in to our ultimate playlists. This is where I take you through a journey as well on history. Notes, quotes. We'll see if it slides into my top 10 queen projects of all time, queen songs, queen related songs, if you will. And this week's effort is an underrated track, uh, an unknown track by casual fans. Uh, it's not exactly the most talked about track. Uh, it's a track called All Dead, All Dead. We have a couple of different versions, mostly thanks thanks to the 2017 reissue of News of the World as a box set. Uh, thankfully for that, that's what we have a couple of tracks to listen to. Um, but it's a good track. It's a good track. So let's get into the nitty gritty of it right now. How do we do that? Well, I'm going to give you some notes and quotes up stop, and then we're going to listen to the version so we can determine it. How do we listen? Well, I'm not going to get a strike on YouTube or anything like that. So what I will do, if you look in the show notes below, there will be a link to a Google Doc, which features all the different links to YouTube versions that are available for the different versions of the track that we're going to listen to. So I'm going to have some con- we'll have some conversation at a moment in time. I will tell you to pause this podcast, go listen to the track. And then you can come back and continue, and then we'll discuss that and go on from there, on and on until we get through all the versions and we start breaking it down. This week, we have three versions to listen to, three different versions to listen to. There are four out in the world, but one of them is the convention demo. And if if you've been a longtime listener, you know what that is. If you're not, if you're a new listener, welcome. If you're a new listener, the convention demos are basically when Queen, like Greg Brooks, the Queen archivist, and, and those of his ilk would go to conventions, Queen conventions. They would bring stuff from the studio, and they're not supposed to uh, record it or not supposed to leak it out. Uh, but people don't always listen, and it's to the detriment. I admit it's to the detriment of uh, the fan base. Like they, this is how they get exclusives this way. And to when they people leak it out, it means they're much less likely to bring exclusives to the convention. So I get it. So should I be pushing this? out i mean it's out there anyway so i've listened to it for sure um but most of the time they're very like cassette recorded bad audio sounding versions uh also they have over the top of greg brooks saying property of queen productions over and over again so that you can't have a crystallized listen anyway um Although I will say sometimes they have some unique versions. I almost never put them in the running for Crown Jewel because unless it's a like the greatest version of all time and like it's a decent enough copy, I can't see any way I'd put this as my greatest version. However, I used to, I always like to mention them as curios so you can go and listen to it if you'd like. The All Dead, All Dead convention demo that is out there is basically an instrumental demo. Not even that much different. It's not really worth your time. There's an interesting piano ending. That's a little different than the studio version. However, that might not even be part of the same track. A lot of the time, Greg puts these tracks in the, on a tape and it kind of plays through. And it might even be the start of something else. I don't even know necessarily. But all right, that out of the way, we do have three versions to listen to this week. We have the studio version that was on the original release of All Dead, All, of News of the World, rather. We have the original Rough Mix, which was an alternative take that was on the 2017 reissue and then we have a very interesting version called a hybrid mix which was released on youtube when queen the official queen channel released a video for all dead all dead and at least two different versions and the hybrid mix is a what it says it's a hybrid between the official studio version and the original rough mix so we'll get to there when we talk about the differences but those are the three we are going to listen to Let's get to it. Let's get some uh, first initial thoughts. Uh, This is written by Brian May. Uh, Musicians are Brian on lead vocals, piano and guitar, Freddie Mercury on harmony vocals, John Deacon on the bass guitar, Roger Taylor on drums. The simple song. There's not a whole lot going on 
as far as different instruments, no cacophony of sound, a very beautifully layered track. Now, the best way I can describe it, I'll actually leave it to Brian from a quote from the uh, in the studio with a red beard from October 27th, 1997, when they were talking about News of the World, the 20th anniversary at the time. Brian was asked about the track and he stated, quote, I don't think I've ever talked about that track. Nobody's ever wanted to know about that track. It was a song I'd had around for a while. It was kind of about the passing of friends. And I think it crystallized because now this is very embarrassing. I don't know if I should talk about this. Well, I think the things that started it off was losing my cat. My cat died when I was a kid and I kind of never got over it. And I think it was one of those things which surfaces now and again in different ways. I think I wrote the song for the album thinking that I was writing it about something completely different. But I think part of it was sort of getting that out of my system, which is a very strange thing to say. And I think that's what it's about. We never talked about it. In those days, we never talked about it in the band. We didn't talk about things, what things were about. Never, which is strange. So it's kind of personal, I suppose. And that's, that's mainly what it's about. Now, that wasn't the only time he did talk about it. Brian is not always the greatest, doesn't always have the greatest memory. He did talk about it in Guitar Player in 1982. He mentioned specifically that the guitar interlude is one of my favorites. That was one of the ones which I thought came off best, and I was really pleased with the sound. It always gives me a surprise when I listen to it, because it was meant to really bring tears to your eyes, and it almost does it to me. Uh, and finally, before you go on, Roger Taylor in 1977, talking to EMI Italy, stated, it's a quiet track, very typical of Brian May's, very delicate and melodic. I personally think that there's a slight McCartney influence there. Written and sung by Brian, it's about priceless memories. And finally, before we actually break it down and listen to it, in 2008, on his official website, uh, he was responding to the fact that there are pictures of lyrics that were not used in the track. Those specific lyrics were, memories, my memories, how long can you stay to haunt my days? And he said, these words are the ones I was going to sing over the piano introduction, but decided not to. You could try it if you like. Now, of course, almost 10 years later, nine years later, we get to hear that Freddie did get to sing those lyrics over the piano intro. But that's not yet. That's going to be our next thing in the original rough mix that we listened to. So without further ado, let's take a listen to the studio version. We'll come back and we'll talk about it. Like I said, that Google Doc is in the link below. Click on it and come right back because I'll be here waiting. All right, and we are back. What a very nice piano intro. It's one of my favorite bits about the entire song. The intro is just the very legato, slowly feeling his way, uh, not set to any rhythm. It's just kind of like setting the groundwork for this song. Uh, got a very melancholic feel. Uh, it's just very uh, pensive kind of feel. Um, it's a beautiful melody to begin it. It just kind of sets the mood. Um, and the actual song starts just Brian and the piano, and it's a very beautiful melody. Um, and Brian, actually, I've said this before, and I'll probably say it many times again, as much as Brian was the hard rocker of the band, he was really the most inclined to do the heavy metal type stuff, the really rock and roll type stuff. Brian's voice actually was more of a McCartney voice and that it fits more of the, the slower, the folksier, the singer songwriter kind of feel. He has a nice, quiet tone to his voice that really worked for these types of songs. Um so the beginning is, like I said, just Brian, the piano, and the first All Dead, All Dead comes in, and it's Brian and Freddie as a duet, and man, that works so well. Unlike your typical Queen choir-like harmonies, it really just feels like it's Brian and Freddie together, almost as if it's just Brian on the piano, and Freddie happened to kind of walk in and just sing along with them. Um, it's a very nice feel. It fits the tone of the song very well. Again, not very Queen-like, and yet it is also very Queen-like in some ways. It just, it just It's a beautiful tone going forward. Um, and then after that, the bass and drums do kick in, but not like in any heavy way. It's just kind of like we're going to enter now. Like almost like almost like a little jazzy feel to it, uh, almost like a lounge singer kind of thing. She's going through it. Uh, the ooze come in. We do get a little bit more of that Queen choir in the background. Um, Freddie adding a lot. Uh, the bass line for the guitar work, uh, where is it? I, I want to call it guitar work. It's not really a solo. There's a section in the middle. Um, it just has a very, it's not like a solo you could think of. It's not like a lot of noodling or anything like that. I even a lot of wandering guitar. It's more of like a bed. It like lays this bed of feelings. Um, very haunting, string-like. Uh, just a formatic way to listen to it. Very stripped back. 
and it kind of builds still it builds there and then it just kind of stops and it's very haunting little echo little re reverb at the end and we get a little haunting bit that's off the guitar stuff again just brian with his voice uh adding some extra like little kind of i feel like there's a little effect on his voice in a way not anything like harm, like harmonic or like it's just kind of like is that haunting ghost-like feel and then Freddie comes back with his vocals at the end. And what a beautiful, beautiful song. Um, I understand why it would never be a single. I also understand why this was never played live because this is not a very concert type song. It would have to be in a special circumstance, special time. Um, but sometimes I think these songs are some of the best on the albums. I definitely understand why they never tried to do it live. It wouldn't make sense to really do it live, but it's a, it's a wonderful track nonetheless. All right, let's move on then to the next version. This is the original Rough Mix, the alternative version that was released again on the disc of alternative versions from the News of the World 2017 box set. Uh, let's, it's that link is in below, that Google sheet. Click on that, come back, and I'll be here waiting to talk about the original Rough Mix here on Crown Jewels. Memories, memories. All right, there you go. The original Rough Mix, the 40th anniversary edition. Um, it is the... There's a story from the Queen archives where some things have gone missing over time and multi-tracks specifically. This is one of those tracks that actually had a multi-track went missing. Brian also, though, is a bit of a hoarder when it comes to material. He likes to make recordings for himself, things of that nature. Brian had a cassette tape with a rough mix of All Dead, All Dead that they were able to clean up. Um, and the biggest difference about the original rough mix, it, it features Freddie on lead vocals. Uh, it's basically Freddie doing the track instead of Brian, which is, of course, very interesting and something I always want to hear. That's that's one of my go-tos when it comes to, I hear these releases are coming, the news of the world, et cetera. There are tracks where I would love to hear Brian and Roger sing their songs that Freddie ended up recording in the studio because it's just different versions. And of course, if Freddie got to record a version of a Brian and Roger track that Brian and Roger sings on the official release, I've always wanted to hear Freddie doing things like that. There's stuff out there Freddie doing, potentially doing Man on Fire. There's stuff potentially out there Freddie. I mean, we know that there's a song Rocket on the game, which Roger sings most of. But there are a complete Freddie version out there. There's also a complete Roger version out there as well. I love to hear these different things. So hearing Freddie sing this is a very intriguing way to go. I will say that... Freddie's version is more, is less McCartney-esque. He's more, because Freddie's got a different kind of voice, obviously. Uh, so it makes it for a different song. It does sound a little strange at first. I'm used to Brian. And from that quote before, Freddie actually does sing those lyrics over the top. The uh, memory is my memory is how long can you stay to haunt my days. Um, it's a very, I actually do like it, but I don't know if I would have liked it if Brian had done it, because it feels like it's a more Freddie thing to sing, more Freddie uh, just the way it was sung over the intro, it feels like that's so much more of a Freddyism than a Brianism. So since we got the studio version of Brian on lead vocals, I'm kind of almost glad they left it out. It doesn't fit as well. But I love hearing it in the Freddy version. Um, the big difference in terms of song itself, there are a few lyrics that are a little different, uh, not a few different uh, versions of, of, of takes of, of his vocals, different, different line reads, obviously. But what does stand out to me, though, is the fact that we don't get the backing vocals, the Freddie and Brian duet, which is a shame because I love hearing Freddie and Brian singing together. As much as I love Freddie doing it, um, I wish we had at least kept Brian on, on the backing vocals and hearing that too wet. Uh, it kind of does take away from the version a little bit for me, although I'm very glad, very, very glad I got to hear it because it's definitely a different take. So, all right, one more take to listen to the hybrid mix, the hybrid version. So again, it's in that Google Doc. Come back, we will talk about it. Twas not for talk of loving. Twas not for talk at all. All right, that's the hybrid version. Now, how this came to be is a little bit of a mystery. It's kind of a marketing thing, I believe. Um, a couple different things were happening. During 2017, Queen and Adam Lambert were on tour while they were celebrating News of the World. They had a stage setting that was based on Frank the Robot, who was on the cover of News of the World. Um they did a couple more news of the world tracks initially before reverting. Unfortunately, I got to, I missed them doing it's late, which made me mad. They had dropped it by the time they had gotten to Boston where I had seen them in that tour on that tour. Uh, but in October, when it was released, BBC radio to play the original rough mix of all that, all that as a way to kind of highlight some of the alternate takes we were going to get. Uh, I think it was an interesting choice for them to do that considering it's definitely not a well-known song from the album. 
Um, but perhaps because it was so different, and maybe that was why they chose. Either way, they did. They they played it on BBC Radio Two, and then on the official Queen YouTube page, they produced a video of All Dead, All Dead, which was a very full animated video. Uh, it was created by it was a Unico or Unanico Studios. Um, and it was directed by Jason Jameson and Robert Milne. Um, I got this information, by the way, from Queen Vault, the great website or the great uh, history of a lot of different tracks, different versions. You get to hear from them. Um, so definitely check, check out Queen Vault. It's a great, great resource as well. Um, however, the, what the most strange thing about it was it wasn't the it wasn't a video for the original rough mix completely. It starts out that way. We get the the Freddy opening and things of that nature. But then like about halfway through, about a you know, minute and a half through, all of a sudden we get that Brian and Freddy chorus parts. Um, so we get the backing vocals, which we were missing from the original rough take, which I'm happy for. And then at the end after that, we get a little bit of Brian's lead vocal. Freddy does come back. And at the end, they kind of go back and forth on it. And it becomes more of a duet even than it was before. Because instead of just a duetting on like some backing vocals or some chorus moments, there's actually a little bit of a, a give and take uh you sing this part you sing this part um and it's it's very interesting i like the video the video is fun it's the cat with frank uh the robot uh, it's an interesting take i do like the animation for it um but it's a very intriguing version and we don't have it anywhere else it's not on any it wasn't on the 20th anniversary that it make it up i mean I, I guess rightfully so to a degree although we've had remixes on reissues before so i don't know why this is actually a remix or retake that actually works because it's just using the queen material still um getting some freddie vocals on there as well so i don't know but we got it on the official youtube page luckily i put that video in there hopefully you enjoyed that as well all right, it's time to rank the versions and rate the track. Uh, this is a pretty easy thing for me to do. I'm going to go from my least favorite to the Crown Jewel. Uh, on the bottom of the mix is the original Rough Mix. Again, more of a curio than anything else. I love hearing Freddie's vocals, and it's not a Freddie versus Brian thing in this particular case. In fact, some of the versions make it easier, an easier decision for me. Um, but I do love the Freddie Brian duet part, and that missing from the original Rough Mix kind of seals the deal. Um, as far as that goes, again, all three versions are great to listen to. All three versions could go on the playlist. I, I do. I will say that right off the top of the back. I got it, but I got to pick one to go last, and that's it. So it's either the hybrid mix or the album version. It was the only two we got left. Well, I'll come right out and say it. It's the hybrid mix that wins it for me. Hybrid mix is the crown jewel because we get the best of both worlds. I get ready on lead vocals with that haunting uh, initial vocal that gets deleted on the Brian May version. I get Brian lead vocals during towards the end of the track, and I get that wonderful duet going on at the same time. Um, so I can understand completely if you chose if you chose the album version as that's the original version, that's the way they intended it to be. Um, but give me more Freddie vocals with Brian doing vocals as well. That's my jam. I love it most when the band actually sings together, when they have different uh, versions of the song where you get to hear some Freddie Lee vocals, some Brian Lee vocals, and in some cases, some Roger Lee vocals. You know, Roger here, of course. Um, but that's it. The hybrid version is my favorite version. All right, let's rate the track now on a scale of 1 to 11 because we always turn it up to 11 here on PLD Projects. This one I'm going to give... is This is a tough one for me to rate, really. Um it's one of those songs that in some ways are like a 10 as a 10 because it's such a, I think it's a well-crafted, uh, haunting, emotive track. However, it's not one that's a go-to for me either, and I'm not certain why. So in some cases, there's a lot of tracks I listened to before I listened to this. I almost kind of forget about it. And if it is forgettable in any way, then how can it rate too high? So I'll kind of put it in the middle. I think I'll give it 7.5 out of 11. Still on the higher end, still a nice track. Beautifully well done. A hidden gem to a degree. But at the same time, there's just a lot of songs that I would place over the top of All Dead, All Dead. Uh, which means, of course, it does not slide into my top 10. It's been a little while since you've had anything slide into the top 10. But alas, that is the deal. All right, that's going to do it for us this week, folks. Of course, next week is a, a very cool track. It's a, the John Deacon track, or the first of two John Deacon tracks from this album. And while it's not his most famous track, um, it is a pretty well-known track spread your wings a wonderfully beautiful piano power ballad uh that freddie was really born to 
born to sing, I feel. But we'll get there later on. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun to listen to, uh, to break down rather, and go into. So that is next week. Thank you so much if this is your first time here. Do that whole like, subscribe, bell, all that stuff. Let, get, try to build this channel out, trying to build both channels out. This and my Prime PLD Projects channel. Uh, we're making slow progress, but it's still progress nonetheless. And I really appreciate you guys checking this out and uh, sticking around. Uh, and of course, if you want to help the channel even further, patreon.com slash PLD projects really pays for the whole thing i really got to appreciate all my patrons like austin cadell brandon buckingham jeff alterman uh jeremiah morris and the rest i couldn't do it without you guys i really i can't tell you enough how much you guys mean to me um and have a great crew great crew there so yeah all right guys that'll do it for this week we will see you next week for spread your wings and check out the rest of the stuff guilty products main channel has a lot of movie and tv type stuff got a star wars show a uh, media show where we go through horror movies with pj campbell two meter per weight dudes on film um, got review which is me and lego going through the v franchise from the 80s uh we got a uh, bunch of other stuff the big, big blue box is my new one with pj there you go the big blue box uh where we're talking about doctor who and an after show for doctor who a lot of good stuff going on i really uh i really love to, to engage with you guys and find me on social media at paul and on twitter uh leave comments talk to me on twitter whatever you want to do i'm always open to discuss queen and uh, any uh, movie tv show that you want to talk about as well all right, guys, take care. I will see you next time. And until then, of course, keep yourself alive. God save the queen.